Deep in the Arkansas Ozarks, Hell Creek has carved a narrow gorge through limestone bedrock with water-polished slot channels and other features that might remind you of more famous settings in southern Utah. This valley contains excellent examples of Ozark karst features, such as this natural tunnel bypassing the creek's main channel, and a particularly good demonstration of the difference between a losing stream segment and a gaining stream segment, both along Hell Creek. This is a designated natural area, established to protect the sensitive ecosystem here. It's a fascinating place, but the interpretive information available focuses on the biological resources, not the geological setting that supports them. So today on Ozark Outsider, we're going to take you on a brief tour of Hell Creek's geologic features, following a visit when conditions were near perfect for us to explore, but leave no trace, in this heavenly Ozark setting. Reaching Hell Creek involves descending a steep, semi-official trail that's clearly been an access route for some time. There is no trail within the gorge, just a narrow creek bottom lined with boulders. Even a little water here would make the smooth bedrock surfaces very slippery, and a lot of flow would render this route dangerously impassable. As the valley narrows and deepens, Paleozoic limestone bluffs rise ever higher. Although the surrounding ridges are capped by Mississippian age limestone and chert of the Boone Formation, the star of the show is the older Ordovician age platin limestone that underlies Hell Creek in this part of the natural area. This geologic map from the Arkansas Geologic Survey emphasizes two key points for appreciating the geology here. One is that karst features like disappearing streams, caves, and springs are common in the platin, and we'll see all of those today. The other is that the bedrock here is mapped as dipping gently to the southwest, directly upstream in this part of the valley. Hiking downstream, the valley floor is defined by the water-polished surfaces of limestone beds, but most of the actual descent happens over a series of abrupt stair steps like this one, where the creek jumps from one limestone bed to another. The fact that these beds are gently tilted back upstream probably contributes to the prominence of this pattern and helps make the valley distinct. Careful attention to the bedrock will turn up evidence of the limestone's original depositional environment. These appear to be trace fossils, preserving signs of abundant life churning up the original soft sediment. In Arkansas, this part of the platin limestone has been interpreted as forming in a muddy tidal flat setting, perfect for developing this sort of texture. Another possible sign of this tidal flat environment comes from these geometric patterns, which may represent mud cracks formed in a setting with variable water levels. Here's a modern comparison from a river floodplain, showing the angular pattern typical of this feature. We're not 100% sure these features are mud cracks, as they're not as well developed as others we've seen, but mud cracks are reported to be widespread in the platin, so we thought they were worth sharing. The creek has been bone dry so far, but as we descend further, we start encountering signs of karst development, including minor seeps emerging from the bedrock. Dropping through the steepest and narrowest slot yet, we round a corner to find a small cave entrance. Which is blocked by rubble a short distance in. There is an extensive cave system within the natural area, but it's closed to the public and should be left undisturbed. For a nice slideshow of this cave's interior, visit the Ozark Cave Diving Alliance website, linked below. Running parallel to the deep slot in the creek is that rock tunnel we featured in the opener. The unusually rounded shape of this passage suggests that it was formed by subsurface water. Our guess is that it's part of an older cave system that was exposed by later erosion along Hell Creek. Below the cave and tunnel, Hell Creek changes dramatically from the dry bedrock valley upstream. Water is suddenly everywhere, tumbling through boulders as it gushes from multiple springs, supporting a sudden abundance of life. Vibrant green mosses share space with the first wildflowers of spring, like these blooming drought lilies. Less welcome biology included the first tick of spring, a black-legged tick. This sudden transition from dry to wet makes Hell Creek a great demonstration of the difference between losing and gaining streams in karst settings. A losing stream, like the upstream segment of Hell Creek, 
tends to lose surface flow down into the fractured and dissolved limestone bedrock typical of karst areas. But as that water moves through the bedrock, it tends to reappear somewhere else in the form of seeps and springs, as in the downstream segment of Hell Creek, a gaining stream. The geologic map we showed earlier noted that springs are especially common in the lower portion of the Platten limestone, which is where we are in the geologic sequence. Even in the dry upstream segment, there are clear signs that sufficient precipitation can overwhelm the karst system and generate temporarily high stream flows. Check out these large boulders stacked up against one another like mating turtles. The upstream boulder had to have been lifted up onto the downstream one, clearly demonstrating a history of powerful flows along this creek. This also forms a pattern geologists call imbrication, preserving a record of which direction the flow occurred. The spring-fed portion of the valley is a good place to turn around, as the going gets a lot wetter and the natural area's northern boundary isn't much farther downstream. Climbing back up through the slot is a good reminder of the role of water here, from the blue pool at the slot's base to the rounded features polished by ephemeral creek flow. Other water-polished limestone features are also clear as we hike back upstream. And the stair-step effect of the gently dipping limestone beds is particularly noticeable when ascending in this direction. Though this site is open to the public, it's a setting that can't and shouldn't be visited by everyone. The entry road is steep and gullied. There really isn't a trail system. High water could easily block the narrow canyon, and over-visitation could quickly degrade the site's natural resources that earned it a natural area designation in the first place. But Hell Creek Natural Area is a great example of how some geologic knowledge can really enhance time spent in the outdoors. Oh, wow. It's a pretty spot regardless of context, but the experience is richer for recognizing how karst processes and bedrock patterns influence the very different upper and lower parts of the valley. We hope you enjoyed visiting it with us, and look forward to your feedback and questions in the comments below.